So welcome everyone to this session. Um, hopefully you've come to the right one. Um, and here we're looking at a topic that's really dear to my heart um, around MHPSS um, in humanitarian settings, in particular in the context of COVID-19 uh, in Cambodia. We have 40 minutes together um, and uh, it's uh, a very interesting session. Uh, by the top protection specialist of UNICEF in Cambodia, talking about um, the experience they've had there, the challenges, some of the lessons learned and so on, um, as well as doing some exercises with you, because this is um, uh, something where we want to hear from you, what have some of your challenges been, what are some of the um, opportunities that you see in the context where you're working. I want to remind us of the uh, the words that were spoken by one of the uh, panelists in the opening session today, uh, Ramya Subramanian, was talking about how absolutely key, with her words, how absolutely key MHPSS services are uh, to maintaining them uh, through closures, through restrictions on coming together, through school being shut, etc. And so I think this session, and if you're staying on for the next session, both of them will be focusing in on mental health and psychosocial supports. What yeah. services are we able to provide? How do we adapt them for the context that we're now finding ourselves in? So without further ado, I would like to, uh, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Joanna Wedge. I work for um, UNICEF as uh, one of the co-leads for the Alliance's Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to be here with you. And it's been a great pleasure uh, to work with our presenter, Miho Yoshikawa, uh, over the last couple of weeks as we put together this session. So Miho, as I said, is a Child Protection Specialist um, on Scale, Innovation and Inspire with UNICEF Cambodia. Since 2016, she's been working on violence prevention and response in collaboration with multiple sectors, um, such as education, health, and communication for development. Before that, she worked with UNICEF India on system strengthening, including the Child Protection Information Management System, the CPIMS, as some of you know. So with that, Miho, can you give us a recap from uh, what you presented on your video? in terms of kind of what what were the what was the situation for UNICEF Cambodia Thank you, Joanna, for the introduction. And hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, how Cambodia has adopted and provided mental health and psychosocial support services to children, caregivers, and frontline workers during COVID-19 pandemic. So um, there was a huge um, and unprecedented needs for MHPSS, mental health and psychosocial support. And at the same time, uh, the containment measures together with the widespread fear of the spread of the virus made it very difficult for us to reach those in need with the face-to-face -face service provision. So adapting to the COVID-19 context, uh, UNICEF Cambodia has used innovative solutions to provide both direct services and supportive MHPSS messages to the wider community. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So this is a quick summary of the key interventions. So first, UNICEF Cambodia has um, established an innovative partnership with the NGO specializing in MHPSS for the uh, delivery of direct counseling services through phone hotlines and Facebook messengers for children and caregivers, as well as social workers and residential care staff. So also psychiatric treatment was made available face-to-face -face for those who are really struggling. And second, uh, UNICEF has also adopted the existing child protection programs. For example, the positive parenting program has been implemented by the government of Cambodia um, since 2017, aiming to provide parenting support and reduce violence against children at home. But uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the group-based parenting sessions in the community settings and also home visits were suspended. So to fill in this gap, uh, we have um, strengthened our partnership with the NGO specializing in parenting support to conduct awareness, uh, community awareness raising campaigns 
with the loudspeakers to disseminate key messages on MHPSS and positive parenting and COVID-19 prevention. So this way, we were able to reach those who do not have um, easy access to the internet or phone services. The third, um, so we also have a uh, lot of uh, integration of MHPSS programs across sectors, including education, health, and communication for development. So uh, for example, uh, we have uh, UNICEF Cambodia has adapted a comprehensive package of MHPSS messages to the context of COVID-19. So these MHPSS messages have been disseminated in the multiple channels together with the information on COVID-19 prevention and including a back to school campaign to prepare teachers and schools to respond to MHPSS needs when the schools reopen. So this is a quick recap of key interventions in Cambodia and over to you, Joanna. Super, thanks so much, Mihong. Uh, we will have a time to uh, take some questions. So if you have any questions based on uh, the video or, or what Miho has just um, recapped or in the coming uh, conversations and presentations, then please put them in the chat box and then we'll be able to pick up on them um, a little bit later. So right now we have a question for you. Um, we want to find out what were some of the challenges that you faced in the, in, the, in the response so far. On the Mentimeter, you will see that we've listed out seven challenges that practitioners commonly have faced so far when it comes to implementing MHPSS over the past months. So we'd like you to rank them according to your interest, and then we will um, take the top three for the breakout rooms. Okay. So if you go to that Mentimeter um, link, click on it, and then take a minute or two to rank those questions or those challenges, I guess. And then we'll come back in, uh, in about five minutes and see what, what you said were the top issues for you. In the meantime, we're going to hear from Miho about the challenges um, and the lessons learned in her context. Thanks, Joanna. Um, so maybe Jessica, uh, can you show the uh, maybe third slide of my presentation? Yeah, thanks, that's the one. So while the colleagues are voting, um, <laughs> I'm going to share my experience and also uh, observations in terms of challenges and lessons learned, especially in the context of Cambodia. So the first one is understanding the needs of children and caregivers to inform the MHPSS programming. I think we discussed a lot today, including in a plenary discussion um, in the morning. So. Um, so as I mentioned before, UNICEF Cambodia um, adapted the package of MHPSS messages to the context of COVID-19 in consultation with local NGOs. And at the same time, it was also very difficult for us to hear and reflect the voices of children and caregivers to tailor messages So because of the containment measures. So it is very important to um, ensure, I mean, it's very important to understand um, culturally, uh, culturally specific needs to ensure that the interventions are grounded to the context and look, uh, local uh, realities. And also it is very important to, I mean, whenever possible, it is very important to conduct consultations with children and adult community stakeholders and to ensure that their perspectives and also um, needs are incorporated into these interventions to better target responses. So the second, um, it's also um, uh, important to strengthen the integration of MHPSS activities across sectors to improve the reach and quality. So for instance, um, the UNICEF Cambodia was supporting the Cambodian Ministry of Health to uh, establish the Telegram groups. So te Telegram is um, like a mobile-based application like WhatsApp. So using this like a platform, um, they have disseminated the MHPSS messages to the healthcare practitioners across the country and who have further provided quality emotional support for more children and caregivers in the communities through the outreach activities. So it's also very important to um, strengthen coordination and facilitate collaboration across sectors for information sharing and also consistency of MHPSS activities. 
And third, um, ensure the continuity of MHPSS service delivery for vulnerable and marginalized children. So um, it was also very challenging for us to reach community people, including children with direct and indirect services, especially for uh, those who do not have um, access to the internet. So um, to address this, um, MHPSS messages have been disseminated the, in the communities with loudspeakers. And, but at the same time, it's also very important to take into account how to reach other mar marginalized children, such as uh, children with disabilities and children affected by migration and also children from ethnic minority groups. And next slide, please. Thank you. And the Fourth one, it's a capacity building of frontline workers. So there is a clear need to um, develop the workforce across sectors to um, provide multi, um, to provide like a different levels of MHPSS services. So um, for example, like a UNICEF Cambodia provided training on psychological first aid for social workers and child protection actors. And so that they can identify the children and caregivers with mental health and psychosocial distress, and also provide first line psychosocial support and uh, refer cases to specialized services. And fifth, uh, the self care for organizational staff and frontline workers. So uh, I think COVID-19 brought significant opportunity to highlight the critical roles that, um, that the social workers and also other front workers can play in reaching um, children and caregivers and also providing support to them, um, especially individual case management and also MHPSS. And at the same time, um, they, may, they are likely to um, take on additional workload and also they may face stigma while working in the pandemic. So to address this, um, UNICEF Cambodia has provided uh, more hands-on coaching and mentoring support and online and also like uh, by phone calls uh, through the partnership with NGOs. Um, also um, in addition to the online and phone counseling services for frontline workers. And six is um, measure, measure the effectiveness of remote MHPSS service delivery. So I think provision of online and phone counseling services is a promising modality to expand the reach in a cost-effective manner. But at the same time, um, there is um, uncertainty of the effectiveness in comparison to face-to-face -to -face service provision. So um, therefore, I think it's important to um, take advantage of remote modalities and while not compromising the effectiveness of service provision. And last but not least, um, managing stigma surrounding MHPSS among communities and practitioners and governments. So um, it was uh, reported by our NGO partners, there was a lack of general awareness among um, community people on the importance of mental health and well-being of children. So um, it's also very important to increase awareness on MHPSS and also to uh, promote positive perceptions of the frontline workers among communities. So these are the challenges and lessons learned uh, coming out of Cambodia. And I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Miho. There's a lot of richness and learning already there. So it's great that we have this chance to unpack it a bit further. Um, so there's a couple of questions already coming in. Um, Sarah, do you want to open your mic and, and ask your question? Yeah, hi, thank you so much. And um, this is really, really interesting. Um, I was just curious, you talked about developing some new tools and sort of adaptations of tools. And I was curious to know whether, to what extent were you developing these in country or were you accessing globally developed tools and resources? Just to know, um, yeah, just to know if you weren't using global, globally developed tools, was there a reason for that? Maybe you were. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Joanna, can I just respond to question or should we take more questions? No, I think it'd be good if we go with that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah. So um, it's kind of mixed. 
So um, uh, we, of course, we have used that the parenting tips produced by the um, Parenting for Lifelong Health, and it, we found it quite useful. And also it's super easy for us to adapt it in the Cambodian context. And also in terms of MHPSS messages, um, we got the kind of comprehensive package of messages like for different target audiences developed by our regional office. So it was developed by our regional office. So it's kind of already contextualized to the regional context. So it was also easier for us to adapt it to the country's context. Yeah. I hope I answered your question. Excellent. So there's a couple of others here saying, um, let's see who's the name of that one. Mackenzie says she'd be interested to hear more details of your lessons learned on integration with education or facilitating cross-sectoral collaboration in general. Right, <laughs> thanks. Uh, so maybe um, I have been mainly working with education team and health and also C4D communication for development teams in the office. But maybe uh, uh, let me give you some examples on education. So um, I think I mentioned about back to school campaign. Um, so we are going to start this campaign nationwide reaching all the school staff um, in all 25 provinces in Cambodia. So we were able to include um, some important MHPSS components in this uh, campaign so that like a teachers can learn about very basic information on MHPSS. And also um, we were able to incorporate MHPSS indicators in the education sector needs assessment. So we were also able to, um, actually we are waiting at the moment to get some more results on this. And also um, the Ministry of Education was quite open. So we were able to incorporate some child protection and MHPSS activities in the education sector response plan to COVID-19. So you can see like uh, the collaboration happens at different levels, starting from communications and also response plan and also um, needs assessment. Thanks. And we have one more here, um, which is from Susel saying, what was the feedback of the community regarding the use of loudspeakers? Was it used rooted in a specific cultural context? Thank you. Um, it's a <laughs> very good question. Um, just to be honest with you, um, um, so that's one of the challenges we have faced. So it's so difficult for us to get rapid feedback in such a context. And then we focused on, I mean, we targeted urban poor community um, where people do not, I mean, most people do not have internet access because we want to reach um, with them with messages, right? Um, so therefore we were not really able to get rapid feedback through online and most of them do not have mobile phones so like uh, we couldn't even get feedback through phone calls. And of course we couldn't visit them just to get feedback face to face. So to be honest, that was one of the challenges we have faced. And then I also, um, yeah, I would like to hear from all of you if you have any experience on like, um, um, you know, in terms of measurement or effectiveness on such a campaign using loudspeakers. Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, Charlotte is saying, and maybe you should incorporate the issue of stigmatization during the campaign, since it was one of your challenges, trying to educate them about COVID-19. Lots of questions coming in. How are community groups and faith leaders involved in providing MHPSS support to those that are difficult to reach? And then just quickly, I'm gonna take this one from Colly saying, how do you measure the number of children and caregivers reached? Because measuring programs, MHPSS programs is a real challenge. Do you think you'll be able to answer both those and then we can wrap up? Yeah, um, right. Where should I start from? Um, How about the measurement one? Sorry. Measurement. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's kind of easy for us to get the number. Um, so through the online platforms, how many people we have reached and also like phone calls, how many people have received uh, counseling services. And then the challenging part was the um, community campaign, I mean, awareness raising campaign with loudspeakers. So we just do like a rough estimate. So this is a population in this uh, village or community. And then at this time of, uh, of the day, like uh, maybe uh, estimated to have like uh, this number of people in that community. So we were able to reach that number of people. But Again, in terms of effectiveness, it's a bit of question mark. And this is, uh, to be honest, this is what I also would like to hear from you about. And uh, in terms of religious leaders, uh, as some of you may know, Cambodia, most of uh, Cambodian people are uh, Buddhist. Um, and then we also worked with uh, monks 
um, to disseminate messages, uh, but maybe like through online. So we also did a video messages on MHPSS together with monks and then disseminated it online. And I think it has reached more than 3 million um, people in the country with a total population of 15 million. So thanks. Okay. Um, let's take one last question, if that's all right, and then we'll go and find out what the challenges were. And that was, could you share your experiences on the safe school and child-friendly spaces opening? Right. Um, so we do not, in terms of safe school, um, so that's the, inter the schools have not opened in Cambodia yet. I mean, some private schools have opened and then also um, some uh, um, students like uh, for grade nine and grade 12, like uh, they need to take exams. So like uh, they started going to schools, but like uh, we don't have, um, I mean, not so many schools have opened yet. And then, but uh, in terms of safe school initiatives, like uh, the Ministry of Education in Cambodia has child protection in schools policy. And then, so now we started working with NGOs to, um, have um, uh, implementation guidelines uh, of the child protection in schools at school level. So teachers and like uh, um, um, school directors can follow that uh, um, implementation guidelines. So this is one of the school, uh, safe school initiatives we are doing. Great, thanks for that example. Um, we are now going to share with you the results of the Mentimeter. Uh, our producer Jessica will get that up on the screen. And we'll be able to see what are the challenges, how have you ranked those challenges that we set out. So very small. <laughs> there we go. And I still can't see it very well. Yes. So ensuring the, co uh, the continuity of MHPSS services, service delivery delivery for vulnerable and marginalized, that's a top one. The second one is measuring the effectiveness of uh, remote MHPSS service delivery. And then the third one is effective integration of MHPSS across sectors, such as health education and social work, followed very closely by understanding the needs of children and caregivers to inform MHPSS programming. So those are the, the key challenges that you feel you've been facing. And hopefully, using Miho's um, lessons learned as well as each other, we'll be able to examine those now in some breakout rooms. So um, we won't be able to report back from the rooms. We're gonna have you put down your comments on Jamboard and then we're capturing who's in the, the session and we will send you a follow-up email with those Jamboards so you can get some ideas from other, other rooms, other discussions. We are going to, um, uh, allocate you out randomly to the room. Um, Jessica has put a link into the chat box and is asking you to open it so that you can see the instructions. You will be invited to go to a breakout room and then you need to click on the link for that breakout room. So you need to remember if you're room one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then Miho and myself will drop in on, on your rooms throughout. So if you haven't used Jamboard before, uh, the instructions are to discuss that uh, topic that you'll see there. In the blue sticky notes, we're asking you what were the different ways you rose to this challenge? Or if you didn't actually have that challenge so much, what were the ways you would rise to that challenge? On the yellow, we're asking, did anything or anyone surprise you? Did anyone step forward or is there some gap uh, in services um, that you did not anticipate. And then on the pink, what resources are still missing to tackle this challenge in your context? So what are the ways that you rose to the challenge? Any surprises and any resources still missing for you? Okay, we're giving you about uh, 10 minutes to be in the groups. So if you could open that link in the chat box and then accept the breakout room Hi everybody, I think we have maybe three or four minutes left of this session. I'm sorry it was such a brief time in your breakout rooms, but we just thought um, we'll try and capture those jam boards and discussions that you had. And I just wanted to give one or two bits of, uh, you know, my impression from, from the rooms that I visited. 
Um, and one of them seemed to be really the importance of, uh, obviously, of mobile phones, but of the helplines. So using them, obviously, for dealing with, you know, providing service, but also for assessing what are the needs and what are the possibilities for reaching people beyond the helpline itself. So using that as a, a way of surveying um, both the, the needs and also the opportunities. Um, yeah, so that was one, one thing that I picked up on. Miho, do you want to share some of your thoughts? Sure. Um, so, yeah, um, the interesting thing I found was, um, I mean, the me about measurement. So, like, uh, how do we avoid double counting, for example, like uh, when we talk about breach, right? And also, like, uh, how do we measure the effectiveness, effectiveness of MHPSS services without putting children at risk and also without creating any stigma? So that's what I found quite interesting. And I think this is one of the topics we can continue to discuss about. Are there any tips or not yet? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think uh, there, there are many ways and there are many things for consideration too. And I don't think I can provide this is the one solution we need to apply to many other countries. But I think, um, I hope this session is a good starting point for all of us to continue our discussion about these important uh, uh, points. And I understand I may be able to share my presentation and Jamboard results with all of you um, by email. So uh, in my presentation, in the last slide, I put some resources available in Cambodia, including MHPSS messages in the COVID-19 context. And I hope you will find it useful. And in- You want to pop that up right now, Miho, and then people could even screen grab it. Uh, Jessica, sure. can we put that last slide up of the presentation? And then people- yeah a screen grab, you know, in case uh, we don't have their email or, or there's something to block us to get to you. Can you see that? Yeah, we can. Thanks. Thank you. Um, should I make quick closing? Please go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. No, I, no, I was just going to say thank you so much. Um, to everyone for attending the session. And it's so nice to uh, see the engaging conversation. And I think one of the things COVID-19 brought to us is um, the COVID-19 brought significant opportunity to, to highlight the, um, sorry, the highlight um, that the stress and trauma can impact everyone. So I think uh, this also has opened up a window to enable dialogues and action and so I do look forward to continuing our discussion with all of you, like for promoting mental health and uh, well-being of our children in the world. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Miho, for putting together the presentation and, and being here to answer questions and everything from Cambodia. Very, very, very interesting. Um, I, of course, I'm going to point everyone to go to the, oh, we can't see it here. Go to, my backdrop isn't working. Anyway, to go to the minimum standards uh, and standard 10 on mental health and psychosocial support, there you'll find um, obviously programming guidance, but also um, the, the indicators, as well as, uh, as I mentioned in other sessions, if you go on the website uh, of the Alliance to the CPMS page, you will see the expanded table of indicators and you can then scroll down to standard 10 and look and see which of those would be applicable to the setting that you're working in. So thank you everybody. Um, we are going to start our next session, which is also on MHPSS here in five minutes. Um, or you can go back to, uh, you can come out of the meeting, go back onto Kiko chat and uh, take a break, come back here in five minutes or, or choose another session. So thank you everybody. And we'll try and follow up with the email as Miho said. Bye for now.